In January 2020, I submitted an article to the ACCA AB magazine to discuss the revenue recognition standard, which is the IFAS 15, and to identify whether a business would be acting as a principal or agent. Because the revenue recognized by the principal or agent will be quite different. So first, what do I mean by principal or agent? Well, simply speaking, the principal is the party who makes the product and sells the product. But the agent, on the other hand, will simply be selling the product or services on behalf of the principal. And from the accounting's point of view, in identifying the principal or agent, and that could be a little bit difficult indeed. And therefore, we're going to be seeing five questions on the screen, and if one of them says, and this will be the principal, we can identify or we can confirm that this could be a principal in our accounting policy. Now, the first question is, who fulfills the contract, which means who provides the services or goods. So if a platform only provides a platform rather than making the product, and that party providing a platform would be an agent. And of course, who fulfills the contract, who provides goods, would be the principal. Second, who bears inventory risks. And that means if inventories are unsold, or we'll bear those losses. If the party bears those losses, and that will be a principal. Third, who establishes the selling price? Well, that means who has power to set up the selling price, either be the maximum or minimum selling price of the item. If that party has the power to set up the price, and that party is a principal. Fourth, if a party buys at very low price and sells it at a higher price and enjoy the profit from it, instead of receiving the commission from another party, the first party will certainly be the principal to buy at low price and sell it at a higher price. Finally, who bears the credit risk? And that means if the money cannot be collected from the final customer, who bears the losses. The party bears the losses, who certainly be the principal. So, from the accounting's point of view, imagine that we are a bookshop, we are buying and selling books, and to us, the purchase cost for each book is 10. If I were to sell it to a final customer, I can get 15. And that means the profit from the sale will be $5 here. And if I were to conclude our bookshop is a principle because we've got the powers to set up the price. And if that's the case then, if I sell one book, it costs me 10, I will recognise the cost of sales and to reduce the inventories because it's our inventories, it's the principal's inventories. And at the same time, I can recognise the full $15 of my sales revenue if I've sold it to a final customer at 15, with debit bank or receivables of 15, and to credit to increase the revenue. And that means the profit I can recognize will be 15 of the revenue and minus the cost of sales of 10, and that will be $5, as we mentioned before. But on the other hand, for the same scenario, if I were to conclude that I'm the agent rather than the principal, and if that's the case then, I cannot recognise the cost of sales of 10 if I were to sell this book to the final customer. All I can do is when I receive the money from a customer or is about to receive the money from a customer, I would debit bank or receivable worth of 15. But at the same time, within that $15, I have to pay $10 to the principal party which means $10 here, we increase to credit the payables account. And that means the revenue that I can recognize from the agent's point of view will certainly be the difference worth of $5, which means the commission income here. So as you can see, 
from the accounting's point of view, if I were to conclude that I'm the agent, I can recognize more revenue here. And that means this would be in a gross basis. But on the other hand, if I were to conclude that I'm the agent, of course, we're going to use the net basis to recognize the revenue, which means less revenue that we can recognize in this particular case. But either method would certainly be impacting the profit in the same way. Because in the first method, the profit would be 5. In the second method, the profit would still be $5 of your commission income. But how about for real companies? Well, for example, the first company, Uber, because it provides a platform and offering a network of independent taxi drivers who uses their platform provided by Uber. And in this case, Uber receives mainly commission income for each sale or each uh, taxi bill. And if that's the case, then Uber, in its annual report, it concludes it is acting as an agent and that means it should recognize revenue on a net basis i.e. not to recognize the cost of sales but to only to recognize the commission income each and every time second company is called Napster company is the music downloading services provider and because it has the right to recommend which artist to customer and that means it determines almost everything. And if that's the case, then Napster, Napster company concludes it is acting as a principal. And that means it should recognize revenue on a gross basis, which means the full revenue that it should recognize at the same time, the corresponding cost of sales figures. The third party is called Groupon. It's an e-commerce company to buy the product or services online. In this case, in this company, in its accounting policy, this, this will be divided into two methods. For the direct sales, it is deemed as the principal and to recognize the gross revenue because the direct sales will be the products that they made. And for other services, they sell those services on behalf of the third parties, for example, the airline company selling the airline tickets they only receive the commission income, so that's why for the second part of their revenue stream, they would deem themselves as agent and to recognize revenue on a net basis, i.e. only to recognize the commission income. So in practice, it's quite difficult indeed into identifying the company where there will be an agent or a principal. And in my article, I provided you with a lot more examples why this complexity arises and if you're interested in that please visit our website and see my article and see my other videos as well or join our ACCA courses I look forward to seeing you then bye APC accounting for your future